Hi, this is Steve at BlessedHopeForever.com. Located about uh, midway between the constellations of uh, Boades and Ursa Major is uh, probably the most single, most greatest mystery in the universe. This uh, enormous dark space uh, filled with dark matter, it's, it's a void, it's the uh, uh, Boades void. It's a super void. It's a great void. It's like 330 million light years across. It's, a, it's an enormous void. It's a, a, without question, it's the darkest, loneliest place in the universe. Uh, considered by many scientists to be the most significant uh, anomaly ever discovered. They don't understand why that this void is so empty of, uh, of galaxies they don't think that this should even exist because they think that there should be more galaxies it doesn't make sense that there's not as many galaxies in this area uh, i think they've uh, what i read was that there were 60 uh, at least known galaxies in this area where whereas there should be you know a few hundred uh, thousand or something i mean some ridiculous amount it, it's just empty. It's void. It's black. It's uh, it's dark, and it's mysterious. And uh, of course, uh, they can't figure out why it's there. Our scientists can't figure out why it's there. Maybe it'd be great if one of them stopped and, and asked us why it's there, because I think we know why it's there. It's 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 there because God wanted it there. It's there because He wanted us to see it. And I'm going to talk about something that uh, uh, has to do with tw the year 2020 that uh, you'll find interesting. I, th I, I think you will. What's important to me is the fact that it's there, that God put it there, that he wanted us to see it. And it's a place of great mystery and it's a, and it's a place of utter darkness. And we know, as Christians, we know the meaning, the significance of darkness. I think it relates to Abraham's wife, Sarah, the mother of many nations, the, the carrier of Abraham's seed, the promised Messiah, you know, Virgo, the, the virgin. We see the connection of Vir Virgo with, with God's people, Israel, and the, and the great sign of, you know, Revelation 12. I want to I want to just explain to you that God made a promise to Abraham that he wouldn't go uh, childless, that his seed would become as the stars of heaven. And... Uh, so, but after that, as the sun was going down, he fell into a deep sleep and uh, great uh, darkness, horror and great darkness fell upon Abraham. And God said to Abraham uh, that your descendants will be strangers in a land that's not theirs. Uh, you'll serve them. They'll afflict them uh, uh, 400 years, 400 years. That's Genesis chapter 15. So the first spiritual application of this, this region of the great darkness, this uh, Bodhi's void, is what was shown to Abraham concerning the 400 years the seed would be afflicted in a land not their own. And afterwards, we know that the Lord, working through Moses, you know, delivered the children of Israel out of this great darkness. Uh, and so located in, the, in this area, uh, the, the Bodhi's super void, which borders the constellations of Ursa Major, uh, uh, the uh, Sheepfold, uh, Draco, uh, the dragon, and Hercules, the mighty one. And of course, we know Hercules is, we know who that is. That's our, uh, Hercules is, is, is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, Moses, uh, that God worked through to deliver the children of Israel out of this uh, great darkness seen by Abraham was a messianic figure foreshadowing uh, the Messiah who would deliver, deliver his people out of great spiritual darkness and and, and uh, there would be a tremendous harvest of, 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 of redeemed individuals come about as a result of that we see the, the, the sickle in the left hand of uh, Bodhi's which we know to be the the, the shepherd
uh, in Isaiah, uh, we read, For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Uh, Bo Bootes, Bootes is also known as uh, Arcturus. That is referred to, actually it's referred to in the book of Job. Uh, in Job chapter 38, it mentions uh, Arcturus. The verse literally reads, Canst thou bring forth Maseroth in his season, or canst thou guide Arcturus with his sons? Job 38 and Job 9. Well, the sons of Arcturus, or, uh, or Boades, referred to in that passage, is the neighboring constellation of Ursa Major, uh, also commonly referred to as the Big Dipper, uh, but it doesn't represent a, a really represent a bear. It's 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 real. Its proper design, designation is that of a sheepfold. So the correct representation there should be that of a shepherd, Arcturus, going before his sheep, Ursa Major. And I'm I'm going somewhere with this. Uh, if you just hang with me here. Uh, Along the Euphrates River, Arcturus was referred to as the shepherd of the heavenly flock, the shepherd of the life of heaven. Uh, and it represents not only Moses, the shepherd of Israel, delivering the children out of bondage in Egypt, but, but also our good shepherd, Christ, leaving the ninety and nine sheep and going after the one lost sheep. Uh, the sons of God, which would be Ursa Major, the, the lost sheep of the house of Israel to bring them out of spiritual bondage and return them back to the heavenly fold. So this uh, correlation between this and, and the super void is, is, has to do with its location in regards to Draco the dragon who happens to be facing this great void. Now we can go through the book of Revelation we can read all about how that there's war, there's war in heaven, Michael and his angels, they fight with the dragon, the dragon and his angels fight, uh, there's no place found for them, so the great dragon was cast out, we know that to be the devil, Satan, who deceives the whole world, he's cast to the earth, his angels are cast out with him, we, we know the story. Uh, we see this depicted in the heavens with Draco falling away from the northern uh, regions of the night sky, along with Ursa Minor, that 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 uh, uh, Draco has his tail wrapped around. So you can see, if you look at that, you can see that, that Draco, the dragon, along with Ursa Minor, are heading straight towards the uh, Bodhi's Void, you know, which is the darkest and loneliest spot in the galaxy. And why is that significant? Well, because for if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Y'all are familiar with that verse. The angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation. He's reserved these ones in everlasting chains under darkness until the judgment of the great day. The uh, bordering constellation of Hercules, the mighty one, next to uh, to the Boadi's void. Well, we know that mighty one is none other than the mighty one of Israel, who has his foot squarely on the head of Draco, okay, the dragon. You know, which we know to be the devil and, and Satan. Hercules can be none other than the seed of the woman, the son of God, who is to bruise the head of the serpent. So this is vividly displayed, you know, in the sign of the heavens here, with with uh, the foot of Hercules crushing the head of of Draco, the dragon. Now we know when that we know that the bruising of Satan's head took place when Jesus offered his life on the cross, and he died in our place for our sins. And during the last three hours that Jesus was on the cross, you know, we know that from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. So we can see how that the great boat is void, this great void, the darkest place in the universe, 
has been strategically located by God in close proximity to all those stories from the Bible that relate not only to the horror of great darkness that would come upon the children of Israel for 400 years prior to their deliverance, but also to the everlasting chains of darkness that Satan and his minions would be delivered into and, and the darkness that surrounded the Son of God while he was in the act of, of bruising the head of the serpent. So what are we supposed to think then when, it, when in the summer of 2020, and that was quite a year here in, in the U.S., I think it was probably quite a year for everyone around the planet, but what are we supposed to think when astronomers watch a star die in this region of space and then and it, and it then watch it explode as a supernova for the first time in all all of human history that that they have actually seen in real time a red supergiant reach the end of its life and explode they they watch the star convulse in, in, in its death throws before finally exploding as a supernova and uh this was a team of astronomers who watched this drama unfold through through various ob observatories and they it began in the summer uh, it took it a, a while so it, they, they started watching it in the summer it, I, I believe if i'm not if i'm speaking correctly here i believe it exploded in the fall of 2020 so they watched this thing this was unprecedented never had happened before everything that occurs is is filtered through our absolute undying unswerving belief in god's absolute supreme sovereignty uh, the, the the god who created the heavens who hung the stars in the sky who created the heavens and the earth he wanted that void to be there. He wanted that void to represent darkness. He wanted us to, at this at a particular time in human history, which just happened to be summer of 2020, he wanted us to see this supernova explode. I, I look at that. This is in my opinion, and it's just my opinion only, but I, I believe that this was a, a, the explosion itself was just something that God intended to draw our attention to the area of the cosmos in which all of these constellations foretold the near come the near arrival of our messiah of our deliverer israel's deliverer in particular but also the the savior of the church that he would deliver his sheep uh, of this present dispensation that he would crush uh, satan's heel uh and that, and that they would be uh, and it's interesting, as I pointed out, that uh, Draco is faced toward this great void. This is Steve. Thanks for watching.